Welcome to Discovering the Law. My name is Lucy Rivera, and in today's episode, we're going to feature Honorable Judge Feeney. She is a professional savvy, wonderful role model, and she is the judge in the Bankruptcy Court of Massachusetts. Judge Feeney, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's our honor. My pleasure, Lucy. Thank you for having me. Your Honor, what is a bankruptcy? Bankruptcy is a system of federal laws and rules of procedure, um, which Congress has enacted in order to help people and businesses get relief from the oppression of debt. That is uh, mm -hmm. money that, that they owe. It is um, a bankruptcy code, a mm -hmm. statute, mm -hmm. as well as federal rules of bankruptcy procedure. And a person files for bankruptcy in the United States in one of the 92 judicial districts, such as the District of Massachusetts, which is um, the state of Massachusetts. It's uh, very interesting, Your Honor. And what, what does a federal bankruptcy court judge do? A bankruptcy judge is a federal judge, as you mentioned, who handles um, cases that are commenced in the bankruptcy court for businesses mm -hmm. and individuals, mm -hmm. corporations, uh, partnerships, um, arising under liquidation provisions of the bankruptcy code or uh, reorganization provisions of the bankruptcy code. You may have heard of Chapter 11 reorganization, where yes. businesses and, or individuals can offer a plan to, to repay their debts. And also, we handle disputes within um, a bankruptcy case between creditors and the debtor, mm -hmm. uh, a trustee, if there's a trustee in the case. Generally, a bankruptcy judge um, only handles contested matters or adversary proceedings where there are disputes among parties and interests. If a um, lawyer or um, a debtor um, does the documents correctly, mm -hmm. it often happens that a judge will not see the debtor, the person who files uh, for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. That person need only go before a trustee and um, testify and disclose all assets and be examined uh, under oath. So a bankruptcy judge generally handles disputes within a bankruptcy case. And what are the policies underlying a bankruptcy? Well, Congress in its wisdom has um, passed bankruptcy laws permanently since um, 1938, amending them uh, quite frequently for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, to grant the honest and unfortunate debtor, mm -hmm. that is the person who owes money, relief from the debts. It's called a fresh start. The founding fathers um, came to America and were distressed that in some states, mm -hmm. um, states put people in prison for, for owing money. Mm -hmm. So um, in the mid-1800s, uh, Congress did pass temporary bankruptcy laws, but they finally became permanent um, after the Great Depression in the, in the late um, 1930s. The other um, main policy of the bankruptcy laws is to give creditors a return on their money, mm -hmm. um, to provide them with a distribution to the extent they can be paid something consistent with a debtor's fresh start. And so debtors, um, for the most part, people who file for bankruptcy are given exemptions. That is, they can keep the necessities of life and the bankruptcy trustee and their creditors can, cannot reach those, those necessities. So for the most part, most debtors in a bankruptcy case get a fresh start, relief from most of their debts while keeping their property. They can't get a discharge of certain types of debts which Congress has um, decided um, because of policy reasons, should not be discharged, such as child support, mm -hmm. domestic support obligations, certain types yes. of taxes. 
uh, you can't get a discharge of those. But uh, credit card debts and personal loans, those are all within the scope of, of the discharge. So fresh start and distribution to creditors. What is a discharge, Your Honor? A discharge is a release from debt. Uh, the bankruptcy court will enter an order in the nature of an injunction providing that um, a creditor who's owed money can no longer collect that debt from the business or the individual. And Your Honor, why do people file for bankruptcy? Well, the main reason is to get the discharge that mm -hmm. you just asked about, um, to gain relief from mm -hmm. the oppression of debt. Um, one of the fundamental protections of a bankruptcy is um, what is referred to in the bankruptcy code as the automatic stay. Mm -hmm. So upon the commencement of a bankruptcy case, when a debtor files the petition in bankruptcy, starting the relief process, um, creditors are prohibited from doing anything to try to collect uh, the debt from the debtor. The creditor cannot call the debtor at home any longer. The creditor cannot send letters to the debtor. The creditor cannot continue with lawsuits or file new lawsuits uh, against the debtor. So one of the major benefits is that all of these stressful uh, collection attempts stop, and they must stop automatically um, as soon as the creditor gets notice of the bankruptcy. So one of the requirements of bankruptcy is that the person seeking relief or the business seeking relief must provide a complete and accurate list mm -hmm. of everybody to whom the, the debtor owes money. Mm -hmm. So with that list, we at the court immediately notify the creditors that they must stop the, the collection attempts. And then um, once the bankruptcy proceeds through um, in the case of a liquidation bankruptcy, the trustee will examine the debtor under oath. Usually the discharge will enter in about 90 days. Creditors do have an opportunity to object to a debtor's discharge. Um, in a reorganization case, the, the plan in a Chapter 11 or a Chapter 13, creditors will have an opportunity to object to the plan. They can argue before a judge, this plan doesn't pay me enough because the debtor has more than enough income to pay me, or I could compel a liquidation of assets to pay me. Um, and then sometimes um, we find that um, debtors have not given us an accurate and complete disclosure of their assets. Mm -hmm. And the creditor or the trustee can then object to the discharge in bankruptcy and I will have a trial at which witnesses mm -hmm. are sworn, and um, I will have to make findings of fact and conclusions of law as to whether a debtor is entitled to a discharge. Another type of case I frequently handle is um, when a creditor um, alleges that a debt was incurred by fraud, mm -hmm. and the creditor must um, prove a, a number of elements at a trial, and I will have to make findings, and I may accept a particular debt from a debtor's discharge as, as well. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what is the, um, wh why is bankruptcy helpful for the community, uh, businesses? Well, bankruptcy is helpful for the community for two reasons. Number one, providing individuals with a fresh start so they can go on with their lives. They can attend to their family. They can find a job. They can be productive members of the community without all of the stress of having to um, respond to lawsuits and demands for payment of debt. And also for um, the community, the reorganization chapters of the bankruptcy code are very important. In chapter 11, for example, which is taken advantage of by businesses primarily, um, if the bankruptcy judge confirms a plan of reorganization, jobs will be saved, and um, the business may, may go on with its own fresh start. And the same um, occurs for individual cases, which are primarily filed as Chapter 13 cases. Um, 
a debtor in a Chapter 13 case usually files in order to save the family home, which will be in, in foreclosure because of default of a mortgage. If um, a member of the community is able to save the family home, then foreclosures um, will not um, happen, and urban blight um, with abandoned properties are, are less likely. So bankruptcy is very good for the community. Your Honor, are there any, is there any downside to filing for bankruptcy? Well, there is a downside um, if, if the debtor does not accurately um, disclose all of the assets and, and liabilities that the debtor mm -hmm. has and the discharge will be denied. Uh, the, the other downside is that a bankruptcy does remain on a person's credit report um, for a period of up to 10 years. Post-bankruptcy, a decision on, of whether to extend credit is an individual bank's or, or lender's but generally, these um, types of credit extenders will not give credit to somebody who's filed for bankruptcy for, for a period of time, which is somewhat counterintuitive because they're a better credit mm -hmm. risk after a bankruptcy because mm -hmm. they no longer owe uh, sub substantial debt. Um, the other downside, in particular in reorganization cases, is that sometimes a, a Chapter 11 debtor who wants to continue in business either doesn't abide by the rules or, um, or the plan is not a feasible one. And the downside in that type of, of reorganization case is that the court can convert the case to a liquidation case and put um, the company, the business, out, out of business. And that can happen fairly quickly. Uh, that can happen usually after a hearing at which um, the, the Chapter 11 debtor will be given an opportunity to be heard. But if they don't play that by the rules, they can be liquidated and the reorganization will not be successful. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what is the process to file for bankruptcy? Well, the process is a little complicated, <laughs> um, but the, uh, the first step is for a debtor to file a petition in, in the bankruptcy court together with schedules, which are lists of assets and liabilities and a statement of financial affairs. And as soon as that petition is filed, as I mentioned, the automatic stay is automatic and all action uh, must stop. Um, thereafter, um, a debtor is sworn and examined by either um, an attorney at the Department of Justice uh, under oath, not, not in a courtroom, but in a, um, a meeting room of the Department of Justice about the debtor's assets and liabilities. And that Department of Justice uh, in, individual uh, called the United States trustee uh, mm -hmm. may decide to oppose the bankruptcy or, or may decide that there's nothing here for creditors and I'm simply going to agree to the discharge and um, close out the bankruptcy case very quickly. And about 90% of the individual cases breeze through like that without um, a debtor having to go before a bankruptcy judge. Um, for our viewers today, we have Honorable Judge Finney from the Massachusetts bankruptcy court. Um, Your Honor, do people need a lawyer to file for bankruptcy? I think it's advisable for a debtor and a creditor to have the advice and counsel of a good bankruptcy lawyer. Mm -hmm. The bankruptcy code, the federal rules of bankruptcy procedure, are local rules for the District of Massachusetts. The official forms are very complicated. Um, and a debtor and a creditor um, should, should make sure that the decision to file for bankruptcy is well advised and that the um, bankruptcy documents are complete and accurate. So I, I think it's, it's advisable to, to have a, a, a lawyer who specializes in bankruptcy represent um, anyone in a bankruptcy case. It's quite a complex set of laws 
in rules. I mean, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I learn something new every day. Um, but, Your Honor, having that being so complex, how do people find a good lawyer? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I can start to answer it by advising people how not to find a lawyer. <laughs> and you should not find a lawyer by um, inputting into Google bankruptcy lawyer. <laughs> Um, because uh, the lawyer with the biggest ad um, in Google is not necessarily uh, the best lawyer. Um, I think the best lawyers are found by consulting other people mm -hmm. who have gone through the process, mm -hmm. ask them who um, they have used for their bankruptcy lawyer, whether they're a debtor or a creditor. And if, if a person or a business doesn't know somebody, who, um, who is a bankruptcy lawyer. There are, there are lots of resources. Somebody could call the United States trustee, this agency of the Department of Justice that, that I referenced earlier, and, and ask them for names of good bankruptcy lawyers. Um, you can also consult a number of different um, associations. Um, the American Bankruptcy Institute is an association of thousands of bankruptcy lawyers across the country, and you may be able to get a name from, from its, its website. And also locally, the Boston Bar Association and the Massachusetts Bar Association have um, committees and sections of bankruptcy lawyers who uh, specialize in this field. And you can call um, the Mass Bar Association or the Boston Bar Association and ask them for referrals. They have referral programs, sometimes at a, at a discount for um, people who need, need to file for bankruptcy. There are also resources available for people who um, are so impoverished that they cannot possibly um, afford a lawyer. Um, the Volunteer Lawyers Project of the Boston Bar Association um, the Veterans um, Services, um, Community Legal Aid in the central part of our state and the western part of Massachusetts offer um, excellent legal services as no cost. In the southern part of Massachusetts, South Coast Legal Aid is an excellent provider of free legal services. And they get their volunteers to help people in their bankruptcy cases from all types of, of law firms, some of the large, very expensive law firms, and some of the, um, the better lawyers from smaller law firms and sole practitioners. So there are, there are lots of resources um, to help you find a lawyer. And Your Honor, you mentioned earlier fraud. What are some signs of fraud? For well, in, in my view, the adage, uh, if, um, if, it's, if it sounds too good to be true, it is, 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 is not just an adage and a truism. If, if something um, doesn't add up, it's always better to err on the side of caution. So if you're a creditor and somebody comes to you uh, for, for money and, it, and you can sense that they are not going to use the money for the purpose that they um, say they, they intend to, you shouldn't loan them uh, the money. In the case of a <coughs> homeowner, for example, if mm -hmm. somebody comes to you and says, oh, I, I'll refinance your mortgage, or I'll pay off your mortgage, and you should put the house in, in my name for a while, mm -hmm. and that will help you, Scams like that are too good to be true. You, should, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do it. So that's my advice. Um, buyer beware, debtor beware, creditor beware. And if, if you think that um, somebody um, may, be, may be a fraudster, do not give them any money. Mm -hmm. And report them to the Massachusetts Attorney General, which has a great anti-fraud uh, consumer Protection Division. Um, Be careful. 
Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we, we have five minutes left, but what are some of the ways that people can avoid getting into financial trouble? Well, that, that's a great question. Um, I founded a financial literacy course for high school students um, about 14 years ago. And we're trying to educate students um, when they're young about the need for budgeting, understanding wants versus needs, to be prudent in handling money, to learn how to save money. Great. And these um, rules um, and ideas apply to, to everyone, no matter what age. So the first thing I think people should do in avoiding financial trouble is to um, try to save money and try not to borrow money. Uh, if, you, if you need to borrow money, make sure that you can pay it back. I think it's helpful for a person um, and a business to write down everything they spend for the period of a month and then um, compare that to the revenue, the income that the person uh, receives. And then you'll have a better understanding of what your budget should look like. Mm -hmm. And when you do a budget for your monthly income and expenses, stick to it. And if you're able to stick to your budget, you won't run into financial trouble. If you do have to borrow money, and everybody has to borrow money, it's nobody can write a $20,000 check for a car you have to lease a car, or you have to um, get a vehicle loan for the purchase of a new or a used car. And um, you, you need to make sure that the monthly payment is within your budget for expenses. Mm -hmm. You have fixed expenses, such as rent, such as vehicle payments, taxes, and you really have to understand every penny that you have to spend every month. And unfortunately, um, people um, encounter financial trouble through no fault of their own. They lose their job, uh, they get divorced, and their expenses suddenly mm -hmm. increase, or they have a catastrophic medical illness and they can't work, or they mm -hmm. have uninsured medical expenses. And that's what we are here for at, at the bankruptcy court, to help people with, with, those, with those debts and give them relief mm -hmm. when when they're honest and unfortunate. Your Honor, I think we have two minutes left, but what is the most satisfying thing about being a judge? Well, I think the most satisfying thing for me as a bankruptcy judge is when I can mm -hmm. enter an order confirming mm -hmm. somebody's reorganization plan. I can help a homeowner um, cure a default in, in making their mortgage payments and they can they can save their home. So that's the most rewarding thing to me is when I can help them save their home. And the same thing goes for a business. If I can um, confirm a plan where jobs are saved and, and people get to save their business, that's the most rewarding thing for me. And it's also very re rewarding to have good lawyers appear before you and have interesting uh, legal arguments. Um, mm. So that that's quite rewarding as well. Your Honor, thank you so much for your time, for your work, for founding the Literacy Project at the Bankruptcy Court. Our viewers, uh, we are most grateful to Judge Feeney from the Massachusetts Bankruptcy Court for being here with us today. Thank you, Lucy. It's been my pleasure. And please watch this episode again at www.discoveringthelaw.com. My name is Lucy Rivera. Thank you. Mm -hmm.